Let's go to page 202 and start with number one. Okay, so it says copy and complete. Two lines that do not intersect and are not called plan are called. Okay, the answer would be skewed lines. So again, if two if two lines that do not intersect but they're not on the same plane, they are called skew lines. Okay. Number two, okay, it says compare alternate interior angles angle pairs and consecutive interior angle pairs. Okay, so I'm just gonna say it and you guys have to write it, okay? So the alternate interior angle would be like this over here and this over here. So it would be angles between the two lines and on opposite side of the transversal. Okay, so this is alternate interior angles. Whereas the consecutive interior angles would be the angles between two lines and on the same side of the transversal. Okay, so this is alternate interior angles and this is consecutive interior angles. Okay, okay number three. Okay, number three. So you have this picture. Uh, one, two, three, four, and these are parallel lines and five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so number three. Okay, so copy and complete the statement using the figure at right. Okay, so angle one and which angle are corresponding angles? So corresponding angles are the same position. So, so corresponding angle would be angle one and angle five. Okay. Number four, alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are angle three, and alternate interior angle would be angle six. Okay. So three and six are alternate interior angles. And number five. Okay, angle four and what are consecutive interior angles? So four and six. These are these are the consecutive um, angles. Okay, consider interior angles. Okay, number six. Seven and what are alternate exterior angles? So seven and what angles are, ex are alternate exterior angles? So seven and two. Okay, so these are exterior and the alternate, right? So angle two. Okay. Let's go to number, so number seven. Identify the form of the equation as a slope intercept form or standard form. Okay. So number seven, this is a standard form. Okay, number eight. Okay, so standard form is when you have the x and the y on the same side. Okay. Number eight, so the so this is the 14x minus 2y equal to 26. Okay. Um, number 8, this is a slope intercept form. Okay, this is when you have y equal to 7x minus uh, 13. Okay. Now there's another form that there are other forms that's not on here, but you, you kind of should know. Like this one over here, if you have like a 14x minus 2y minus 26 equal to zero, and you have equal to zero, this is called a general form. Okay? And there's, there are a couple other forms, but these are the ones that you probably need to know, you know, for now. Okay, let's go to Number nine, okay. So this one you probably have to look at this picture over here, okay. So for number nine, okay, the line perpendicular to nine QR. So here's QR, okay, and the line that's perpendicular would be. Uh, so you cannot assume that this is perpendicular because there's no symbol over here, okay. So do not say MR. Okay, you have to you have to look for the, the 
you know, the, the right angle symbol. So see the right angle right over here. So the line that's perpendicular to QR would be NR. Okay. Uh, notice also this, this one over here. That's a simple right over here. So actually PQ is acceptable also. Okay, so PQ or NR. Okay, now next one, line skew to QR. So QR is over here. So skew means a line that uh, does not intersect but is not on the same plane. Okay, so example would be um, like JN is an example of that. Okay, okay, and or JM or K KL, right? But notice there are sometimes there are different options, right? But you have to pay close attention, right? But all these ends you have to contain N, okay? So, so let's go back to it. So perpendicular to QR contains N would be NR, okay? The number 10 parallel to QR containing point N, okay? So parallel to QR and contains point N would be uh, NP or PN, okay? With this over here. Uh, skew line to QR and contains point N would be JN, okay? So again, if, if it doesn't have this requirement, there are many more options, okay? Uh, number 12, plane parallel to plane LMQ. So LMQ, okay, LMQ, so the, this one over here. So the, the plane the parallel to that would be the one in the back. And contains point N would be like NJK, okay? Or KJN, any of those, you know, order. Okay. Okay, let's go to 13. Okay, it says measure angle one and find angle one and angle two, explain your reason. Okay, so if this is 54, then angle one will also 54, and the reason would be vertical angles. So these two are vertical angles, so they are congruent, so this would be 54. And this is also 54. You can use corresponding angles, okay, with, between these two, or you can use alternate interior angle between these two. So either one you use, this will also 54. Now this one over here, now, be, now you have to pay attention. This is true because of the parallel lines, right? So like number 14, these are parallel lines, okay? So this is 95, okay? So angle 2 would be alternate angles, so this would be 95, okay? So this would be 95. And from here, since this is 95, this would be 85 because they have, they have to go 180, right? So these are the linear pair. Okay, or if you use the consecutive interior angles, this is also 180. So 180 minus 95 will give you 85. Okay, so you can use the alternate interior angle first, and then from here you can use the linear pair, or you can use the interior, uh, consecutive interior uh, angles. Okay. okay, so this one is kind of similar to this. Okay. So angle 1 and angle and 135, these are corresponding angles. So corresponding angles, so these two angles are congruent, so this, this would be 135, okay? So this would be, so these are corresponding angles, okay? So corresponding angles are congruent, so this would be 135. And then this would be linear pair, okay? So this would be 180, so 180 minus 135, okay, would give you uh, 45, okay? So this would be 45, okay? Okay. Now, over here, again, to find the value of x and y. So if this is 35, then this would be corresponding angle. So y will equal to 35 because they are corresponding angles. And this would be 145 because this form linear pair or 180 degrees. So 180 minus 35 will give you 145. So this is 35, this is 145. Now this one, okay, this is 48, and this is y, so this is consecutive uh, interior angle, so this is equal to 180, okay? So, so if this is 180, so use 180 minus that, we give you 132, okay? And also, these are alternate interior angles, so this would be equal to each other, so this one is nice, obvious, so what you need to do is you have to go and you know, use, use your calculation, right? So for number 17, you got 48 degrees equal to 5x minus 17, right? They are alternate, they are alternate interior angles. 
So plus 17 on each side. So we got 5x is equal to 65 divided by 5 divided by 5. So x will equal to 13. Okay. So this one you have to do a little bit calculation. This one you can just kind of do in your head. Okay. Number 18. Okay, number 18, so this, so these are alternate angles, I mean corresponding angles. So corresponding angles are congruent, so 2y equal to 58. So divide both sides by 2, you get y equal to 29. Okay, so you get y equal to 29. And then after that, uh, since these are, since this would be, um, Linear pair, so this equal to 180. So that's going to do a little bit of calculation. Okay, so number 18. So you have 50A plus 2X equal to 180, right? Because these are linear pairs. So minus 50A on both sides. So you got 2X equal to uh, 122. Divide both sides by 2. So X equal to 61 uh, degrees. Okay. Okay. Okay, so number 19. It says sketch the uh, rectangular flag of Puerto Rico is shown. Okay. And find the measure of angle 1. So this is angle 1. If angle 3 equal to 55. Okay. Okay. So, f so if. So if you look at this picture over here, so this is number 19. So angle 3 equal to 55. So because this, uh, this is right angle, so this would be 90 minus 55, okay, will give you 35 degrees. Okay? And since these are corresponding angles, so this would be also 35 degrees. So answer would be, um, so this would be 35 and 35, and this is 55. Okay. okay. Let's go to number 20. Okay, it says find the value of x that make them parallel. So if this is x and this is 73 degrees, so in order to make them parallel, this has to equal to 180. Okay, so so 180 minus 73 will equal to x. And so this will give you 107 degrees. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the number 21. So this is 147 degrees, and this is x plus 14 degrees. So these are alternate exterior angles, so these two are congruent, so just to be equal to each other. So 147 equal to x plus 14, so minus 14 on each side. So x equal to 133 degrees. Oh, actually, you don't need a degree because there's a degree over here already. So you don't need another degree over here. Same thing over here. This, this has a degree already, so you don't need a degree over here. Okay, because it's already being taken care of. Okay, 22. Okay, so this is 3x degree, and this is 2x plus 20. Okay, so, um, so this one is kind of a little bit more tricky, okay? Because this one is not related, but first you have to apply the vertical angle. So if this is 3x, this would be 3x also. Okay? Apply your vertical angles. Then this becomes consecutive, uh, consecutive uh, angles, right? Okay? So, so that's going to so this will equal to 180. So 2x plus 20 
plus 3x equal to 180. Okay, this becomes the consecutive angles. Okay, th so this is consecutive interior angles, so they're equal to 180. So let's go ahead and combine the like terms. So you got 5x plus 20 equal to 180, minus 20 on both sides. So you got 5x equal to 160, and divide by 5, divide by 5, so x equal to uh, 32. Okay, let's go to 23. Okay, so you have two, you have the line that goes to two points. You got 8, 12, and you have the 7, negative 5. Okay, and I'm going to insert right above, so this, this is the first line. And I'm going to write side because I, I'm going to, I need the room to work underneath. So that's why I don't want to write down here because it's going to run into each other. So I'm going to write the 9, 2 over here. So I got negative 9, 3, and 8, 2. Okay? So it says, tell whether the line through the given points are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Okay? So in order to tell what kind of lines they are, so what you need to do, you have to find a slope. Okay? So this would be x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay, this is the first point, second point of this line. So slope will equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So slope equal to negative 5. And remember, whatever you substitute point in parentheses, so that will help to keep track of your uh, negative. Okay, so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So the slope of this will equal to uh, negative 17 over negative 1, so slope equal to 17, okay? Now, next, I'm going to do the same thing over here. So this is x1, y1, x2, y2 of the second line. So the slope equal to, again, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So slope equal to 2 minus 2 minus negative 3 over 8 minus negative 9. So slope equal to, so this would be equal to uh, 5, and this would equal to 17. Uh, let me go and double check. Okay, let me double check, make sure I copy it correctly. E2. Okay, so negative 5, negative 17, 7. Minus 8, negative 1. Okay, this one, 2, oh, this is positive 3. See, that's why you have to easy to make a mistake, so you have to watch out for that. Okay, so now you look at two slopes, okay? So this is 17, this is negative uh, 1 over 17. So notice that negative reciprocal of each other, or when you multiply together, you get negative 1, okay? When you multiply, so in this case, the answer would be perpendicular. Again, by looking at the slope, right? So if they are negative reciprocal of each other, or when you multiply together, you get negative one, right? So 17 times negative one over 17 is equal to negative one. So again, when you multiply the two together, you get negative one, or if the slope is negative reciprocal, then answer would be perpendicular, okay? Okay, 24. Okay, again, none one is three, negative four, negative one, four. Okay, and 9, 2 is 2, 7, and then 5, 1. Okay, so you can reach your x1, y1, x2, y2. So slope equal to y2 minus y1. Again, it's always, I know I did it over here, but it's always a good idea to write down the steps so that people can follow, you know, what, what you're thinking, okay? They can remember the key, you know, the important thing to do in math is communication. Okay, that's one of the critical skills. So make sure you kind of go through the steps and explain to people what you're doing, right? So four minus negative four over negative one minus three. So slope will equal to eight over uh, negative four. So slope equal to negative two, okay? Now let's go and do this one. So you can let your x1, y1, x2, y2, right? So slope equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? 
So I know I have over here, but again, you, you need to explain to people what, you know, what are you doing, what formula are you using, right? Again, com communication is one of the critical skills, okay? Again, math is not about just getting the answer, okay? It's not how to communicate your thoughts, okay? So one, so that's one minus seven. Again, what if you substitute, get in the habit of point parentheses, so that way when people see that it's inside parentheses, they know that this is from substitution, okay? So slope will equal to negative six over three. So slope equal to negative two. So notice they have the same slope. If they have same slope, that means they are parallel lines. Okay. Okay. Let's go to next one. Okay, number twenty-five. Okay, what the equation of a line that passing through P and A are parallel and B are perpendicular to a line which with, with the given equation. Okay, so P is three negative one and equal, Y equal to six X minus four. Okay, so first you have to do the parallel and next you have to do the perpendicular, okay? So remember, this is the slope intercept form. So here's your slope, okay? So that's your slope. So let's go and do the parallel line first, okay? So if a line is going to be parallel to that, you're going to have the same slope. So that means right away, you're going to get y equal to 6x plus b, okay? So again, you're going to have the same slope because parallel line, you need to have the same slope, okay? Now to find the b, okay, to find the b, you have to, since you have to go through this point, so you have to put this point inside here. But again, to avoid, you know, lose track of what we're doing, I'm going to go off to the side, and, and use that. So that's your x and the y, okay? So you're gonna get negative one equal to six times uh, three plus b. So negative one equal to 18 plus b. So minus 18 minus 18. So b equal to negative 19, okay? So once I find b equal to negative 19, I come over here and put it in here. So y equal to six x minus 19, okay? So that's, that's for my parallel lines, okay? Now I'm gonna do, so this is part A. Now part B, I'm gonna do perpendicular line, okay? Now, so again, remember, you have to go through the point three negative one, and the line is six x minus four, right? Again, here's your slope, okay? So for perpendicular line, the slope Okay, the, the, for preventing the slope is going to be negative reciprocal. So right away, y equal to negative 1 over 6, x plus b, right? So again, if the slope of the line is 6, and you want to look perpendicular to that, the slope is negative reciprocal, okay? So you can just do the same thing over here. You go off to the side. So that's your x and the y. So you got negative 1 equal to negative 1 over 6 uh, times 3 plus b. Okay, now first let's go and work it out. So you got negative one equal to negative three over six would be negative one over two plus b, okay? Next, let's go ahead and plus one half on each side. So b will equal to negative one half. Okay, now once you find b, you put it back in here. So y equal to negative one over six x minus one half. So this is perpendicular line, okay? So again, you keep the major steps over here, you go off or on the side to do the minor steps. That way you don't lose track of what you try to do, okay? Okay, let's go to 26. So it will be just like number 25, right? So again, you have the point at negative six, five, and the line is seven y plus four x equal to two, okay? Um, so this is in the standard form, but since we've been working with the slope intercept form, let's go and do the slope intercept form, okay? So let's go and minus four x on both sides. So you got seven y is equal to negative four x plus two. Then let's go and divide by seven on each term. So y equal to negative four over seven x plus two over seven. So that's, so now the problem is, becomes this. Okay? Okay, so then we're going to use this information. So first, you, again, you're looking for parallel lines. So if you're going to have line parallel to that, again, here's your slope. So right away, you're going to get y equal to negative 4 over 7x 
plus b. Okay, because in order to be parallel to that, you need to have the same slope. Okay, but because it's it's parallel line, so you're not going to have the same intercepts. So this number is going to be different. Okay, so again to find this number, since you want this line to go through this point, so you have to use this point as your x and the y. So go off to the side. Okay, so you got five equal to negative four over seven. X is negative six. Okay, plus b. So five equal to Multiply, you get 24 over 7 plus b. Okay? And then you minus 24 over 7, minus 24 over 7. Okay? So this will cancel out. So b will equal to, so b 1 over 7. You can, you can use your calculator uh, to work this part out. Um, 11 over 7. Wait, let me double check something very quick. Okay, make sure I copy the form correctly. Okay, and then you need to go to negative 6, 5. Negative 6, 5, 24 over 7. So minus, oh, this is 11. Okay. Okay, so once you find b equal to 11 over 7, you put it back in here. So sometimes you have to go back and double check, you know, uh, your calculation. It's very easy to make mistakes, okay? So always good to double check your answers, okay? Okay, now let's go and do part b. You're going to do perpendicular, okay? Okay, so again, so these are the information that you're using, okay? Now, so... It, the point that you need would be 6, 5, and the equation you use would be negative 4 over 7x plus 2 over 7. Now, since you're going to be perpendicular to that, the slope would be negative reciprocal. So right away, you're going to get y equal to negative means, make opposite reciprocal means flip it over. So you're going to have 7 over 4x plus b, right? Again, negative reciprocal for perpendicular line. Okay, and then after that, you just substitute the point in here. So you're going to get 5 equal to 7 over 4 times negative 6 plus b. Okay, so 5 equal to, uh, so that's going to cancel, negative 3, so it'll be negative 21 over 2 plus b, then plus 21 over 2 plus 21 over 2, so this will cancel out, so b will equal to 10, so it'll be 31 over 2, okay? So now you substitute back in here. So y equal to 7 over 4x plus 31 over 2. And there will be an equation for the perpendicular line. Okay, let's go to uh, next one. Okay, number 27. It's a, it's a distance formula from the distance between the two parallel lines. Okay. And so for this one, if you notice, um, so there are three points. How do you know which two points to use? Okay. Well, if you notice the slope over here, the, the slope over here is, okay, so the slope over here is negative three, negative one. So it would be, you know, uh, the slope is equal to three. Or you can go from here to there. So you go up three over one. So the slope over here is three. Okay, and the distance between the two lines would be perpendicular distance, which would be, so if the slope is 3, 1, then the slope will be negative 1 over 3, so negative 1 over 3. So these two points are the one that you need to get because these two points will give you the, the perpendicular. Okay, so same thing with this situation. So basically, you're looking for distance between these two points. Okay, that will give you the distance between the two lines. Okay, so number 27, basically you have two points. You got negative 1, 3, and you got 2, 2. Okay, and you're looking for distance between them, okay? And so here's your first point, second point, so that's your x1, y1, x2, y2, okay? And so the distance between them, the, the distance formula is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, okay? So distance will equal to, so it would be 2 minus negative 1, square plus 2 
minus 3, okay, and then you square. So distance will equal to square root of, so this would become 3, square would give me 9. This would become um, negative 1, square it becomes 1. So distance will equal to square root of 10, okay. Now, another quick way of doing this method is if you look at the graph paper, okay, so if you notice the, the points, look, look at the, the graph paper. So this, this is your negative 1, 3, okay, and this is your 2, 2, right? So if you were to draw a triangle, notice this is 1 and this is 3, right? And, and see, this is where 1 and 3. So if you square that, you get 1. You square it, you get 9. Okay, so 3 square is 9 plus 1 square is 1. So this, and, you, and you go to 10, and then take the square root. Okay, so you can get the, the, the 3, 3 and 1 from here. I actually kind of skip one step over here. So if you would insert that, this becomes 3 square plus negative 1 square. Okay, so you can... The reason this is negative is because it's going down. Negative is going down, right? So you can see the 1 and the 3. See that? So if you know how to use using the graph, it's much quicker. Okay? Okay, so 28. Okay. So number 28. Uh, or they want you to or run it up to the nearest tenth. So you have to use calculator. Uh, nearest tenth. Okay. So square root of 10. Okay, so 3.16, okay, and if you run to a nearest tenth, this way approximately equal to 3.2, okay? Okay, now next one, again, you're using the two points, so you got negative 2 and 6, and you have the 0 and 1, okay? So this one, you're not going to be able to use this method because uh, the, the, the squares are not really nice, okay, so you just have to use this method. So again, this is point 0.1. Point two, so x1, y1, x2, y2, right? So distance equal to, to x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square. So distance will equal to uh, 0 minus negative 2 square plus uh, y2 is 1 minus y1 squared. Okay, so d equal to square root of, uh, so I'm just going to do ex extra step, plus negative 5 squared. So distance will equal to square root of 4 plus 25. And remember, negative squared is positive, right? So d equal to square root of 29. Okay, and then use your calculator. So this is approximately equal to so, uh, square root of 29 equal, so 5.385, so nearest tenth will give you 